Okay. Hi guys, my name is Christy Wolf. I'm a photographer, a storytelling photographer based in Canmore, Alberta, and I am also an educator and a speaker. Um, the big thing about my photography is I tell stories for medical, special needs, and palliative families. Um, this is part of a conversation series called I was there too. And today we have Allie with us. She's going to tell us a bit about her story and tell us about her son and about the time that we've done photos together. Um, so Allie, tell us a bit about you and your family. Hi, um, I'm Allie and I am mom to a 12 year old boy named Jacob. And uh, it's just the two of us. I have a sweetie in my life and uh, and he's pretty, pretty fabulous for both me and Jacob and Jacob's dad lives in the same town as us and he's my parenting partner and a wonderful fellow. Um, we have a team here in my house of uh, nine women who help me keep my son at home. Jacob requires 24 seven care. So it's um, keeps me busy. He keeps me busy. And um, becoming mom for me included um, becoming a manager of a team of caregivers and um, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey for for us Jacob has had um, we're really close to 800 inpatient days in his life we've had over 50 surgical interventions um, Jacob has a lot of diagnoses um, he was born um, at 24 weeks, which um, predisposed him to having some significant complications very early in life. And, and Jacob did, um, he's a resilient little bugger and uh, showed them all a whole bunch of things they didn't think were what was possible at the time. And I'm just ever so grateful um, that he stuck around because he sure turned me into a better person than I was gonna end up on my own. So um, <laughs> I think that's that's us in a nutshell. I guess if I was to include all of our members of family, the team of caregivers is definitely part of our family. Um, um, Jacob's paternal grandmother is here in Grand Prairie with us. My parents um, are um, in a community outside of Grand Prairie. Um, we're all in Northern Alberta. My parents still live in the house I was born in and I'm very um, tied to this part of our country. It's, it's my home yeah. and it's um, it's where I wanted Jacob to have home as well. And that's been a big part of our journey was organizing the level of care that we have in a smaller Northern community in Canada. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of his, all of his care happens at the Stollery Children's Hospital in Edmonton, right? Yes. yes. And how far so, away is that for you guys? About five hours. Okay. So yeah. you guys heard 800, nearing 800 days in hospital in a hospital that's five hours away from where they live. And so... Yeah. That, I know that's something that we've talked about. I've seen your video that you, I don't, who was that with that that video came out talking about rural healthcare? Oh, rural healthcare. Um, it was a digital story I did mm -hmm. as um, part of a project with um, the Patient and Family Centered Care Council at the Stollery. Um, there's a, a series of coordinators that have the job of interacting with people like me and you. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, it was through it was through my connection there. I'm very very connected to that um, to that team and to that network and to that council. They're very important to me, and uh, that it came through there as an opportunity. Um, a woman named Karen Clack got a hold of me and said, "Hey, did you wanna?" And she had written a article about Jacob and I um, a few years before, and um, it was just really such an honor to get a chance to work with her and again and um you know there's not very many people on this planet that um meet my kiddo and see him yeah yeah and and i would count you among them yeah. and, <laughs> um i don't know if you understand that i don't have to explain it and if you don't understand it i can't explain it to you yeah. Yeah. um when you have a son like mine or a child like mine, um, not everybody can see them. Yeah. And uh, what a pleasure to be seen. So it I'm gonna give a little backstory to Allie and I meeting. Um, I had known her in the online world through the Stollery Children's Hospital and the Facebook group for parents there. Um, 
and then we both happened to be at a conference, the Children's Healthcare Canada conference in Ottawa this past year, and that's when I came across her, and that's also when I met Christy Dickinson of Chronically Simple, um, and she was looking, I had stood up at one point and talked about how it was really great that um, the healthcare professionals were talking about lived experience and family experience and how important that was, but then as they were talking, they were showing all of these stock images of medical situations, and I stood up and I was like, so you could use real pictures of families and like that authentic story of families, and that really stood out for Chrissy Dickinson, um, and she wanted to make that part of her business with Chronically Simple, so she, Allie and her son Jacob were actually the first family that was gifted a session with Chronically simple and I have to say you're actually the only family that was gifted one of those <laughs> sessions because of COVID so we still it's in the works but COVID changed a lot of things so I want to go back to that story for a little bit sure. so we we were I think I was actually at the airport and I called you and said chronically simple is going to pay for a photo session because you had said I would like to do a photo session I'll figure out how I'm going to pay for it but I know this is important will you talk about that a little bit um, so when I think, when I think about, um, meeting you in Ottawa and, and getting the chance to, to approach a photographer who is willing and capable, I can tell you that it was like one of those moments where the stars align a little bit because it's really, really difficult to get people to photograph my son and to photograph him well. Yeah. And, um, he's 12 and we have some very interesting photos in our, in our books. <laughs> um, very few are posed or planned. Yeah. Um, it's really, really difficult to capture um, my son's facial expressions and his body postures that he uses to communicate in a way that portray the, their meaning in the moment. And um, you came, you came recommended because there, there's a, we have, several great women in common and aren't we lucky so lucky. And <laughs> I believe it was Heather McCready that said to me you need to meet Christy oh, God. and Christy can do what what you're talking about doing with Jacob and when we were in Ottawa I met Christy Dickinson um prior to the conversation you and I had on the phone yeah and she hadn't said anything about purchasing pictures for me and Jacob. I don't think she knew yet that we were going to do this. <laughs> yeah. What she had said was, I want to give you access to my product. And it was an app. And I want, you know, I want to offer this to you. It might help you. You might like it. And I thought that that was very generous and was quite humbled by her gracious approach. And um, when you called me and it, if you were at the airport, if I was at the airport, I'd not sure where I was, but I know that I was like, yes, we had um, planned a little bit of a family trip um, because my, my sweetheart and I have been together for a little over four years and it was an opportunity to bring him with me and meet family in the Ottawa area of his and um, it was a beautiful trip and there was just so many highlights and you and you and the other Christy were definitely some of them, but so was the family stuff. It was oh, incredible. That's so, yeah. And you'd been to that conference a couple times? Uh, yeah. I'm a bit of a junkie. <laughs> I just registered for this year, even though it's virtual. Me too. <laughs> okay, perfect. We're going to talk about patient and family centered care more because it's so important. And like, I don't know, I am always going to push getting yourself in photos with your kid. Um, I am also going to say to families, because situations have arose, we're like, if we don't do photos now, when are you going to do these photos? So that's something that I do think about and I will, I'm, I'm kind of blunt. Like, when are we going to do these photos, if not now? And that's not actually your case, but there's families that I'm thinking of that we got those photos before their child passed away. Um, and that, there's no, there's no going back on that. Like, doing it occasionally, getting yourself in the picture, whether it's your smartphone, like, all of those things, just take pictures. Because we all know they grow. All We all know things change. And I think just really documenting our lives and normalizing it for other people so they see what it's like um, and they have a connection to it and to our kids in a different way I think are two yeah. really important things <laughs> so Allie and I had set up to meet at Flame's house in Calgary 
on December yes. 26th. We had already planned this and then Christy decided the session was going to be gifted. Um, so this all worked out. So can you tell us a little bit about what it was like having a photographer come to the Flames House? Okay, so um, it was a little bit exciting because I would end up with photos, but it was also kind of exciting the notion of getting to share something that's, um, it feels really intimate to invite somebody to come in sh and share time with you when you're um, exercising your opportunity to um, receive respite care in a hospice um, facility such as that. There's not very many places um, in this country and um, it's one of two in our province that is available to um, a family like me and Jake. And um, when you require 24 hour care at a, at a certain level, um, there's not very many people that are like, yeah, sure, I'll take your kid. Yeah. They're like, yeah, no liability issues, see ya. Yeah. Um, I can't even get him into public school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, I think that having somebody come to the Rotary Flame Cells, I think I was really excited, Christy, to, cause, and I knew the pictures would probably be great. And I have, um, I had no problem having a little faith in that part, that it, that part would be great. What was really exciting to me was somebody w was willing to come and see us. And I don't mean visit. Yeah. I mean witness. Somebody that's was awesome. willing to come and see us. I just got chills. I really appreciate that because I think that's a really important piece that it's, it's not just the images. It's, it's more than that to me. You know, yeah. yeah, there was, there was a little side note to my, to my, <clears throat> um, my photo shoot with you and that was the presence of of a of a very dear woman to me and m my bestie mitch was there with us and she's in a few of our photos and um that captures more than i know how to talk about without getting emotional yeah. because i'm still processing it and when i still have big feelings i have emotions about them and then when i'm done processing it's easier to talk about that stuff but um i've had my son for 12 years and the number of people that are willing to come to us where we are in our life receiving the level of care that we require in order to keep my kiddo going and yeah. to, to have someone bear witness to our life and just just hold space just sit there in it you can't fix it you can't make it better you don't want to make it worse yeah just to be there Yep. We captured so much for me in those pictures. Yep. And it was because there was, there was women there with me that day, yourself, Mitch, some of those nursing yeah. staff. Um, I made a huge connection with another mom in the house at that particular stay. Um, what gifts to me nice. to have these wonderful women bear witness to my life. And it, photos was all wrapped up in that it was yeah. fabulous. <laughs> yeah and I think like the fact that it is like an hour or two we're not planning anything other than I'm just gonna hang out with you guys and be there and yeah. photograph whatever's happening so there was some time where you guys were doing puzzles in the sunroom and then there was some time where we went down and you guys had breakfast and so it was a lot of different things happening but it was your everyday things happening too so there was like in the images you can see some medical care happening but you can see a lot more just family time happening which is I mean I aim for that regardless of who I'm photographing um, and just uh oh, we lost your video. <gasps> there you are. <laughs> oh god. Sorry. So my phone just told me I have twenty percent. So <laughs> maybe I should plan to plug it in while we're doing this. How do you feel about that? I think you could make a little break to plug it in, and I'll just randomly okay. talk for a few minutes. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, it's totally what happens. Go get the cord. I'm just gonna talk okay. for a second. Um, so Ali's talking about the same thing. Um, that we experienced. So we had a photographer named Roz of Slice of Love Photography come and photograph Kane's heart surgery this past year. Um, it was part of her personal project. Roz had her own heart surgery and she wanted to know, so she was about two and a half when this happened and she's my age now, we won't talk about that. But she came and wanted to see what a family would have gone through um, during a heart surgery. So what the parents would have gone through. So she spent 48 hours with us during Kane's heart surgery and photographed all of it. Um, and that's what is in my book. 
tell your story through photography. So the first half of the book that I'm getting hopefully this week is the first half is our story of Kane's heart surgery with my photos and Kane's photos and Roz's photos. So I'm in some of the photos, but it's also my perspective and it's also Kane's perspective. And then the second half of the book is um, just some steps about how you can tell your own story with photography. So I'm really excited about this book. Um, I don't know. I don't know what'll Me happen. Too. <laughs> I just, I just needed to do it. Like, I don't know. I had, I have so many photos and you can see behind me, those are blog books from every year. So every year that I've had a blog, I've taken all the blog posts about my family and put them in. So I have like seven books, I think it is now of just all of those memories, all the writing, all the pictures, all just go in there. And then in case the internet ever explodes or whatever happens with the internet, I have all <laughs> of that printed and they're available for my kids to look through. So those are some of the things like I really, I try with clients to always um, create a slideshow for them. So they have something set to music that they can kind of play and then provide the digital images. Um, and then sometimes I'll do a blog post and stuff as well. And yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this, but on Chronically Simple's website, there's a couple pictures of Jacob on there. Is there? Nice. It's like hit with um, touch chat on the iPad and just hands. There's not so much faces, but there's just like some of the details about life, um, which I thought was, yeah, just really cool. It's an actual medical image. Um, and so that's one of the things I really like. Now, before we got crazy, crazy interrupted there, I wanted to say we were planning that at some point I would get up to you. And yes. that's something that is hugely in my heart because you talked about all those people that matter to Jacob and all of your support network and all of that stuff. And we weren't able to capture any of that when we were in Calgary, because that's not your home. That's not where people are. So you, yes, we got you, we got Jake, we got Mitch, but then there's all these people that are part of your story that haven't been included in those images. And so I know we both feel the same way about this and getting to Grand Prix at some time. And we also know it won't be any time in the near future, but it's on my list. It is on my yes. list for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, has it changed the way, like seeing those images, seeing that slideshow, and I'll probably include a link to the slideshow so that people can take a look. Um, has that changed the way you see anything? Like you talked about it, notice it be, being that someone saw you, but what did it change for you? Um, what did it change? Or how did it impact I, having those photos, I guess? I, I think I think it felt like receiving. I have a really itchy nose and I'm trying not to, but it's just gotta happen, so it just happens. Um. <laughs> I think it, I think it felt like I was, like I received something and, um, uh, proof. Yeah. There's an image. We were there. We do that. One of my favorite images is Jacob's feet on his monkey pillow. Cool. I know exactly because, which one you're talking about. Because not every, not anybody walking into a room would pick out that one little monkey pillow and know it, it's story. And, and you don't know it's story, yeah. but you took a picture of it. Yeah. And like, that's proof. That's proof that the monkey pillow mattered. <laughs> and I think about the details that like, that's a detail that's easy to remember the monkey pillow, but sometimes in those pictures are details that you're sick of. You don't want to think about, you don't actually yeah. want to see ever again. And then two years down the road, you might be like, oh, we don't, we don't need that anymore. Or yes. this is totally different. And I'd almost forgotten about this and like, look how far we've gone or look at what's changed for us. And I think those details sometimes help to just remind you. And like, I don't know, the whole strength and resiliency thing I think is really important for us seeing ourselves in those kind of photos because yeah. we're tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found, I found those, those photos did something for my body image in that period of my life because did I they? don't think that, yeah, I was like, you look fine. Stop freaking out. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause like, that's just part of being a lady and being a mom and your body changes and you're like, <sighs> but it's a really um, good yeah. point because that's often a barrier for a lot of people um, about, I, I find particularly women, 
about how they're looking and I'll do these pictures when I lose 10 pounds. Like that kind of idea that I'm not good enough right now, so I'm not going to do yeah. it right now. Instead of like, just, yeah, no, this is me right now. And maybe yeah, it'll look do different down the road, but it's me right now. I do believe I had on a Metallica t-shirt and a pair of blue tights. Yes, or maybe did. an Iron Maiden t-shirt. I can't remember. I think it was But Metallica. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, does it have any like Drake, Jake drool on it? Like... <laughs> Am I going to be okay? And why didn't I pack something for the photo shoot? And I'm like, you came to hospice care. You brought your tights and your t-shirts because yep. that's what you're doing here. Yep. And I'm like, okay, so that's what I wear in the pictures. Yep. You know? <laughs> it's the real life. Like, this is what it looks yep. like all the time, friends. Um, so what's next for you guys? What's um, coming up? I know you mentioned school. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what that'll look like. Yeah. Um, I want to remain respectful and hopeful and yeah. grateful. And, um, you know, everybody's got their thing that works for me. Prayer is usually a good idea for me. And my little prayer is help me to set aside everything I know and everything I think I know about interacting with public school um, yeah. and education for my kiddo and help me have a new experience because I, oh, we need one. Yeah. Jacob has has no plan to have access to in any type of in instruction at all this year. And that is also big time due to the whole thing that's happening in our society these days about germs and bugs and stuff. And I've yeah. lived like this for 12 years, so I really don't know what everybody's freaking out about, but. Isn't that funny? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's something. So, <laughs> you know, like, we are a house that wipes down the doorknobs in our house every day. We are a house that uses um, an antibacterial spray on high traffic areas. We all wipe our phones. I have never worn the shirt I've grocery shopped in to hold my son. This is our life. Yeah. And the, and the whole world's going crazy. And I'm like, uh -huh, right. Like, welcome to my world. One thing that's been super cool, though, is like how accessible everything has become. And I know that's really awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, well, if you can't make it, then I don't know if our clinic can help you. Yeah, now you're talking on the phone to me and I have to wait around three hours and I don't have to know exactly when you call. Yeah. But I don't mind that because a lot of our care at this stage in Jacob's life is maintenance yeah. and quality and quality of life, um, comfort of care goals is this is what we're about, you know? Yeah. So we do blood work sometimes if we're worried and we look at things like weight gain or loss and we adjust things. And I don't like the technology today, his breathing machine talks to a computer in Edmonton on a daily basis. So crazy. And it used to drive me wild that I had to go to a clinic at the Stollery for somebody to go, yeah, I read the report that got emailed to me. You're all good. See ya. Yep. Yep. Rural I care love. will definitely change, hey? Yeah. So there's like um, one of our contracts for support come, came up and they're like, so how many trips are you doing? I'm like, none. We're good. We'll stay home. Like, we don't need it. Yeah. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. All of a sudden, the world that I've asked for for years is there and all of our clinics are willing to work online with us. Nice. And... Here's hoping that'll continue even after crisis is averted or annihilated. Whatever. Whatever is going to happen. Um, <laughs> what, was, what was Jacob's schooling like before COVID? Like just for comparison, like the fact that nothing's going to be happening this year. What was he doing before COVID? Uh, so last year he received less than 30 days of instruction of an hour and a half a day in the yeah. entire school year. Okay. So that last year was a bit of an epic bomb okay um a good school program for jacob would look like two or three hours every day during yeah. the week that he would have an ea working with him on um socially and intellectually appropriate topics and have him teaching stuff and yeah. we have not been able to achieve that for uh a couple of years and i just I have this permission slip above my desk that I wrote to myself and it says permission to be totally badass and go against the grain and advocate and fight for what's right for Jake and not for what's easy. Signed, Dr. Martins. 
<laughs> I love it, Dr. Martins. That's so yeah. perfect. And I can yeah. absolutely relate to that. Okay, I don't know if you saw this pop up, but I just got a pop up that told me that I have only a few minutes left because I don't pay okay. for a Zoom account and I guess it won't let me record for a long time. That's These are hilarious. the things I'm learning as I go, but that's, to me, that's what this is all about. Like, hey, I want to do this. I'm going to jump in and do it and it'll get better each time. Allie is my third conversation right now. Um, but yeah, it'll continue to improve and we'll know yeah. things like, hey, did you plug in your phone? Plug in your phone? <laughs> But I cannot wait till I see you. I will definitely see you virtually in November. Yes. Um, yes. But I don't know. I hope it's not too long after before I get to see you in real life. Yeah. So give your kiddo a big hug for me. I will. Yeah. And take care of yourself. Okay.